I've been in office 15 years. We're trying to see who can outlast the other. <laughs> He's done a great, great, great job. Uh, just to give you a little update, uh, population in San Antonio in a metropolitan standard area grew by 37,479 people from July 14th to July 15th. But impor more important than that, in that same period of time, we added 35,000 jobs to our area. And unemployment down to about 3.7%, the fifth lowest metro area with populations of a million or more. But last year when I talked to you, I told you there was one sector of the economy that um, I was concerned about and that we needed to do more work on, and that was the tech industry. A year ago, I told you that Uber and Lyft had left San Antonio while Austin embraced them. I told you that Austin <laughs> had Google Fiber and we didn't, and that we had to do a little bit better job of, um, of uh, doing, uh, working in our tech industry, but we had built some good building blocks that were certainly in the right way. It was tech block, geekdom, cybersecurity, talent development, incentives for the tech industry. And now a year later, we've got a little bit better picture. Uber and Lyft have left Austin <laughs> and have come to San Antonio, and now we have Google Fiber. Thank you, Mayor Taylor, for what you've done there. <laughs> We had a great report come out. Sean Williams, chairman of SA Tech Ecosystem, last week released a study on the tech industry in San Antonio. We've grown from 15,000 jobs in 2008 to 34,000 jobs in 2016. That's doubling. A total economic impact of some $10 billion. And the average wage in that sector is 78,000 compared to 45,000 across the economy. We'll continue to grow the industry through tech firms, embedded tech departments in various companies, and the large military presence. For example, cybersecurity, 24th Air Force at Port San Antonio has over 1,000 people working there. And last year, four private cybersecurity firms located out there. I want to encourage the Port Authority to move forward with a state-of-the-art facility that will provide home for more private sector companies to come and locate next to the 24th Air Force. I want to thank Ricardo Romo for the great program that they put in cybersecurity at UTSA. It is really building an industry for us, Ricardo. Thank you very, very much. We're <clears throat> We're doing our part at Bear County to try to raise the level of the tech industry. Uh, you was mentioned earlier, we opened Bibliotech, the nation's first all digital public library, and we'll be opening our third branch in, uh, in February of next year. And just this uh, Tuesday, the commissioner's court approved agreement with Alamo Colleges to teach Network Plus certification in our Bibliotech, which is a pathway to Rackspace Cloud Academy. So we're gonna really putting in the effort to bring technology to the areas of the county that really need it. I wanna thank my wife, Tracy, for raising over a million dollars for Bibliotech and to Laura Cole for doing a great job. <laughs> Bear County did another little interesting deal, creating a tech innovation fund of some $1 million to focus on recruitment, retention and expansion, talent development, and brand building. We're gonna have an exciting event on June the 16th. We put up $50,000 in a competition in which 42 companies entered and Tech Block will be announcing uh, on June the 16th at a big rally uh, who, will win those, uh, who, who will win those awards. I encourage you to go if you really wanna uplift of what young people in this community are doing, young professionals, go to one of these Tech Block meetings and you'll see where San Antonio is going. We're doing a great job on working on talent development. Mayor Taylor and I started that January a year ago, and that led to SA Works. Peter John Holt and Kate Rogers are leading that effort. It's an industry effort focused on getting education to teach to the job, not to the test. 
We're providing industry certificates in all the high schools, We're partnering with the Alamo College to offer college credits. High schoolers have this opportunity to simultaneously earn an associate degree. And we're gonna ask you to do something. This summer, in all your companies, if you could just open up some intern positions for high school students. Uh, Mayor Taylor and I had a meeting of about 60 different companies, a lot of pledges to do that. Let's teach high school students what it's like to be on the job, give them a little taste of a job, and I think that's gonna help them in their education. I wanna thank uh, Commissioner Tommy Calvert for the work that he has been doing in this area. Now, we also need to retain uh, talent, develop it, retain it, we don't want them to leave. So they need a place to live and work that they would enjoy in. And I think we're doing a good job of that in the downtown area with culture, restaurants, paths, sidewalks, public transit, hundreds of more housing units underway already. I think we've got 5,000 relatively new ones there. Uh, we have a new skyscraper going in, uh, the uh, uh, Frostbank Tower. Let me tell you, that building would be like no other building here in San Antonio. You're going to love it. Randy Smith is with us today who's doing the great work on that. We've had about three or four announcements for condominiums and hotels downtown. Hemisphere Park is under development today and moving fast, fast forward. And the Pearl on the north part of downtown and south town on the south, two barbells are continuing to grow very, very fast. Now, that's great and good, but we need more urban hubs around the community. I think we can say that La Cantera certainly has the uh, uh, basis of an urban hub where people live, work, and play uh, over by the rim area the quarry area in, uh, in Alamo Heights it has something very similar to that. And then a developer came along, which I hope we will all embrace, and I hope what he says will work. That's out at IH10 and UTS Boulevard, UTSA Boulevard. He has 114 acres there, five times the size of Pearl, but they see that as a Pearl development, a very large Pearl. We're walking paths between different elements of a multi-use development. If we will do more of that, that will help more than anything else to cut down on the traffic jams that we have in our community today and give people a choice of life of how they want to live. Now, we are working on the transportation. As you know, it's, uh, the, the funds are always tight in that, and we want to see these urban uh, hubs uh, uh, grow, and we want to make sure we've got good connections in between them. Since Bear County assumed the, starting, the staffing responsibilities, for the Alamo Regional Mobility Authority in which the commissioners appoint the members. Uh, they just recently approved $179 million in funding for 13 non-toll transportation projects. I wanna thank our head of our uh, Public Works Department, Renee Green and County Manager David Smith for putting that plan together and for the board adopting it. So that's a major step forward. In the past four years, in total, for all the things that we, Bear County puts forward for major highway projects, we put forward some $527 million for 21 regionally significant major mobility projects to keep our community moving. Now next, sec, next Thursday, nine o'clock, any of you can be, be in Austin, an important meeting. They're gonna do the final vote on 281, uh, which would, build it out from 1604 to Stone Oak Boulevard. We'll also provide about another 83 million for right of way going out to the county line. They're gonna vote on IH10, which will take us from 1604 out to uh, Fair Oak Boulevard. And at Fair Oaks Boulevard and at uh, Stone Oak, a parking garage will be built by VIA to give mobility with uh, higher occupancy uh, of lanes, lanes in the middle. It's an important meeting. Everything go, will go well, I think. I want to thank Bruce Bug for the tremendous job that he is doing there. And if everything goes right, which I think it will, IH10 construction will start in spring of 2017. And that'll be the, the 281 will go to bid in February of 217 and start also in spring 217. So two major arteries uh, could very well be under construction uh, by next year. One other major one is on 1604 from Calabria over to Highway 90. Uh, that should go out to early fall, go out to construction in early fall. So 
from I-10 East all the way across 1604 to Highway 90 will have uh, four lanes all the way across non-tow. I want to thank Commissioner Kevin Wolf for the great work that he has done in putting these plans together and advocating for them. Professional soccer, the fastest growing sport for millennials and a perfect fit for San Antonio. Commissioner's uh, Court authorized a study in 2011 and concluded that San Antonio is ready for Major League Soccer. Thanks to Garden Hartman, we have an expandable stadium located right off the Wurzbach Parkway on IH, by IH35. Mayor Taylor and I worked together and created a city-county uh, partnership uh, where, we bought, where we bought the stadium and leased it to the Spurs. With the Spurs Sports and Entertainment as owners of San Antonio, a new USL franchise, uh, we have partnered now to pursue the MLS franchise. MLS has already announced they'll be expanding to four markets starting in 2020. And San Antonio is under consideration, will be in competition. We believe Sacramento is a kind of a lay down hand to getting it. Uh, we think St. Louis will be very strong. Uh, we think we'll have to be competing with San Diego and Detroit and possibly Austin and other cities. But we're coming about doing that. The Spurs are working on what the plans would be like for an expandable stadium. They've made contact with MLS. We're keeping up with MLS. So we're going to be working hard on that. We will have to go to voters to get approval to expand the stadium and the funding that will be necessary uh, to do that. We got a big birthday party coming. Wow. Mayor Taylor and I appointed a five member commission uh, that will celebrate our 300th anniversary in uh, May of 2018. And leading up to that 300th anniversary, we're already doing a number of things. Uh, we created the Nuestra Historia in a county building right behind the uh, uh, courthouse. If you get a chance, you may want to go see that. You'll see a letter dating back over 300 years, a Spanish official saying that they ought to create a settlement here uh, in, San, in San Antonio. We've also had some um, research symposium, making sure we got our history right as we move forward uh, to celebrate that great uh, history. Now, most of you probably know our community was not founded on the banks of the, of the river, but actually on the San Pedro Creek. <laughs> Along San Pedro Creek, uh, we, we, we had the first uh, mission uh, de Valero there, and we had the uh, uh, first uh, Spanish Presidio along the creek. Now, we're going to put a lot of money into San Pedro Creek, some $125 million that the uh, county is putting in to turn that from a drainage ditch into a creek with a culture park on its banks. Now, it's going to be unlike the Riverwalk. Don't think Riverwalk. Think something different. You're going to see some walls along there that's going to tell about the history and the culture of San Antonio and written form. You're going to see art that will exemplify that history and that culture. Uh, you're going to see a little color. That color's good. We want it to be a vibrant place. We want it to be different than the river walk. We want people to come there. Randy's building is going to go right on the creek. Uh, we also have another joint adventure with the uh, city. Uh, we're going out for proposals right now on about seven or eight acres of land that's right on the creek uh, to do a multi-use development. And so uh, people are now looking at that as a possible, possible um, uh, uh, development right, right, right along that site. Uh, just this past Tuesday, this week, uh, we approved the construction management contract. Uh, that's underway. We hope to be able to break some ground by the end of summer. And I want to thank Commissioner Paul Elizondo. He's the one that was a driving force behind this and put it together. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> We're doing some things to strengthen uh, law enforcement. Uh, uh, we're going to build a uh, sheriff substation uh, on Rocket Lane on the east side of town and one on Cagnon Road on the west side of town. Uh, we'll be opening both of those, we're going, excuse me, we'll be under construction in both of them by late uh, summer. Uh, Commissioner Rodriguez uh, did a great deal in, in, in creating a new trading academy that's going to be in one of the older schools on Gillette. Uh, we're remodeling that now and we hope to be up and going uh, within about uh, four months. We're also going to be out on uh, IH10, uh, 1604 area, uh, to open a sure uh, fire and 
uh, uh, Sheriff Station, a communication center, along with the uh, Regional Emergency Operations Center owned by Baromet 911 in, in July. We hope to do that in July. Uh, this just this week, we opened the reentry center near the jail where formerly incarcerated inmates will receive service to help them transition back into the community. Absolutely a project that needed to be done and, and it's going to make a big change in, in a lot of people's lives. I want to thank uh, District Attorney Nico LaHood and Judge Sakai and my wife Tracy uh, for working with the Children's Court uh, to change the dynamics of CPS, Child Protective Services, to trying to hold families together, nourish those families, try to keep them together rather than tearing them apart and throwing them into a dysfunctional uh, uh, foster care system. Uh, we've already had great success in the first year where, where more and more families have been held together and less taken away uh, from, from, from families. Uh, we, 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 we really made some great high, uh, headway uh, with respect to culture in our community, and I think that's so very important. Uh, the Confluence Park, we just had groundbreaking on it um, just last week. It's going to be right there on the San Antonio River, just uh, north of, uh, south of town on Mitchell Road. It'll be an outdoor classroom for environmental stewardship, and it'll be right on the mission reach of the, of the river. Uh, Hot Wells Resort, uh, which is also right on the river going south, uh, we should be getting the bids back to that, and something ought to be coming back to the commissioner's court uh, to, accept, uh, to accept those bids and to move forward on the Hot Wells Resort that dates back to the turn of the century. I want to thank uh, Chico Rodriguez, Commissioner Rodriguez, uh, for the great work, leadership that he's done on these two projects, but also on the whole mission reach of the river. Uh, we would not have had a World Heritage designation, the only one in the state of Texas, had we not put the money into the river going south. And, and, and Commissioner Rodriguez was a great uh, leader in that. The Botanical Gardens, if you haven't been there, Tracy and I were there the other night. They bought eight acres of land. They're going to landscape that and plant vegetables and have outdoor cooking and show kids what it's like to do that. It's going to be a wonderful addition. And the Witty, as you go, drive down Broadway, you see it under construction. A hundred million dollars put into the Witty Museum, Mayan exhibit that's there uh, today. And so VIA is going to step forward, and uh, they will soon launch a, a connection, a, a, a culture corridor that will connect the uh, cultural institutions along the Broadway area, from the McNay to the Witty to the Botanical Gardens to the Zoo to the Duceum to the Pearl, down to Blue Star and Southtown and uh, Briscoe Western Art Museum downtown and the uh, uh, Performing, Art, Performing Arts Center a significant uh, investment in the culture of our community. Now you read the other day, 1,500 musicians left Austin. They need a home. <laughs> they need a home. Film industry, uh, you know, we haven't really done a lot in that. Uh, Commissioner Calvert said, well, go over and look at this 100,000 square foot building on the east side of town, and I did. A young man, uh, uh, by the name of Kerry Valderrama, uh, put in place for 10 different uh, film-related uh, companies that are there, finished out the space on the second floor, a little sound studio downstairs. I went out with Diego Bernal, Representative Diego Bernal, he's here, uh, to see some folks connected with, um, uh, with music. And it's called SA Sound Garden. Edwin Stevens uh, was working on that project. Uh, so we put the two of them together, and, and we could take that building, and Mayor, we need to go look at it together. We, it could take that building and really take music and film to another level. It'd be kind of like a geekdom for tech, uh, where they can go in there and share space, uh, where they're able to work on technology resources, production talent, networking, audio engineering, producers. It's a lo much larger industry than you think here in San Antonio. So if we can figure out some way to help them and get that going, that could lead to a major, major impact in our music and our film, film industry. Let me close with a um, cultural aspect that I think is extremely important to San Antonio. And we always have our struggles making sure that we're trying to do everything we can to support them. Uh, the county put some $100 million 
with voter approval into the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts. And I have to keep reminding people that we did that to support local performing arts group. The center is doing great. It ranked number one in the world for theaters with 2,000 seats or less based on performances in the attendance, number one in the world. But it was built to make sure that our performing arts uh, will, will thrive here in San Antonio. So we need to step up. We need to step up and support them and in particular to support the San Antonio Symphony. Uh, if we don't do that and we lose these performing art groups, then the main purpose of the Tobin would be lost. And great American cities, I believe, are committed to, to classical music. Our historical and cultural roots here in San Antonio are tied to it in a very dramatic way. We can go all the way back to 1887 when German immigrant Karl Becker created the first 40-piece orchestra. By 1939, we had a major orchestra that was one of only 19 in the country. And we got nationwide attention by hosting several world premieres by important composers and making major recordings. Today, we have another great orchestra, perhaps better than ever, led by Sebastian Lang Lessing who is recognized across the world as one of the best uh, conductors and music directors in the world. The orchestra is playing great music today. And every school orchestra, band, string quartet, depends on help and inspiration from members of the, of the orchestra. Uh, and if you, if you haven't been to any performances, I encourage you to go. I must say, Tracy and I are more toward uh, pop, uh, concerts than we are classical music, the, the, the pure classical music, but you'll find that to be so enjoyment, uh, so much enjoyment. So I'm going to encourage you to uh, to really go. Now, there's one other thing you need to remember about symphonic music. People, some people would tell you, oh, that's the music of the past. Don't pay any attention of it. They're so so wrong. It has played a major role in developing all forms of music. In fact, the most famous band ever, the Beatles can trace his success to George Martin. He had produced some symphonic music and used his classical expertise to create 22 singles and 13 albums for the Beatles, a body of work that revolutionized popular music. And that will continue to go across. Now, we all know it's expensive to do that. We know that because it's 72 members, 72 people that are on that stage. But if you got to know them, you will find they're some of the most talented individuals in our community. And they do an absolutely great job. We have one of the lower cost of symphonies. We only pay them a little over $30,000. That's not a lot of money for talented people like, like, like they have.